So last summer, my mom actually went on a trip to Florida. And on this trip, she found some pretty cool shells that she was able to bring back. Don't worry, it was all ethical collecting and all of that. All good there. And she ended up giving me quite a few of these shells. And a lot of them had barnacles on them. Now, being more of an earthy bug person, I've really never taken the time to consider the barnacle. I just never really thought they were anything particularly exciting, but I was really wrong. I got really curious. I kept really just staring at the barnacles a little more than the shells, to be honest with you. So I just went ahead and did some digging, and they are some pretty interesting little creatures. So now I'm here in front of the camera to share with you the bizarre life of barnacles. Hey guys, my name is Oliver, and welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel, Exploring Exotics. Meet Serapedia, more commonly known as barnacles. Odds are, you've at least heard of them, even if you're in a landlocked state like I am. Even if that's just seeing them on TV, or in person like on shores or boats. And yes, they are alive. In fact, they're crustaceans, just like lobsters, shrimps, and crabs. And if you're like me, you may have gone into this thinking that they're some kind of mollusk, which would be totally fair. After all, they are shelled, and they have a sessile lifestyle. However, this is a classic case of convergent evolution. Sort of like how dolphins and sharks have the same swim shape, but aren't the same. So I can definitely see barnacles being crustaceans seeming a little far-fetched. But odds are you've only ever seen the outside of a barnacle. If you take a look inside, you can actually see a body plan that resembles a crab. And these weird little creatures are pretty old. Like, pretty old. Definitive shelled barnacles show up in the mid-carboniferous period, around 320 to 330 million years ago. Although they have been argued to be even older. And there are around 1,400 species of barnacle, varying greatly in size. Charles Darwin found large variation, and not just on the species level, he found it largely on the individual level. So keep that in mind as we go along in this video. Now being crustaceans, they are usually found in water. Usually this is shallow waters, with roughly 75% of barnacles living in depths of less than 100 meters, and 25 living in the intertidal zone but some have been recorded to inhabit depths to 600 meters. But despite what depth the barnacle might live at, they all live attached to hard surfaces. This could be rocks, ships, or even other animals. Some barnacles are even parasitic. If you want to learn more about that monstrosity, I have a video all about some interesting parasites, the barnacle being one of them. I'll put that up here and in the description down below if you want to check that out after this video. As mentioned before, there are roughly 1,400 species of described barnacle, but there are two main types. These are the acorn barnacles and the gooseneck barnacles. They are mostly the same, with acorn barnacles attaching their body directly onto a surface, while stalked or gooseneck barnacles have a flexible stalk in between the main body and the surface they're attached to. These guys are called gooseneck barnacles because in medieval times, it was believed that these barnacles were the larval stage of the barnacle goose. Since the geese migrated to mate and people never saw their offspring or their eggs. Obviously, that's not the case. They are not related in any way. I just thought that was really interesting of how they got their name. Moving on. So we know that barnacles are animals. They're crustaceans. But there's always been a large air of mystery with people studying these, at least early on. Like, how do they even get attached to the surface? Were they born there? And speaking of that, how do they reproduce? Well, let's take a look. It all starts at fertilization, of course. Now, when I first started looking at barnacles, I assumed that they would have some kind of external fertilization, or that they would reproduce asexually, like most immobile animals would. But the truth of course, is much weirder than that. And while recent studies show that sperm casting might be present in some species, most barnacles produce sexually and internally. But how? How does this happen? If they can't even move, how does this happen? So first off, barnacles are hermaphrodites, meaning that they have both male and female reproductive organs. Barnacles also have the largest penis size compared to body size, which allows them to cross-fertilize with their neighbors. Idly ho, neighborinos! And after mating season, the barnacle will actually throw its penis away and then just grow a new one the next year. So I know that, and now you have to too. 
Once fertilized, the egg will develop in its mother's shell and eventually be released into the water as small, free-swimming larva called nauplius. The nauplius will feed on plank dye for a few days, time depending on species of course, and then metamorphosize into its next larval stage, called the cyprid. The cyprid is also free-swimming, but will not feed. Instead of hunting for plank dye, it will hunt for its new permanent home. It actually does this with the help of adult barnacles. See, adult barnacles secrete a chemical substance into the water, telling the larva that they should settle nearby. I'm over here. The process of finding a surface could take a few days to a couple of weeks or even longer if it's having trouble finding a suitable surface. But once they find a spot, they will attach and secure themselves head first to said surface using a strong adhesive made in the cement glands. Here, they metamorphosize into their final adult form. For sessile barnacles or acorn barnacles, these spots will usually include rocks, ships, or other animals like sea turtles. Sessile larvae develop six interlocking calcium plates that form a dome over the soft body, with four additional smaller and movable plates at the top. These will act like a door called the operculum. The barnacle will replace and make new plates as it grows. These doors will close up tightly when the tide goes out to conserve moisture and keep them from drying up. Here they say a mobile suspension filter feeders using feather-like modified legs called cirri to feed on plankton and detritus. The cirri extends and retreats, combing the water from the door we mentioned a moment ago. Gooseneck or soft barnacles are a little different though. These guys actually prefer floating on driftwood out in the open ocean. And while they do share things like the presence of cirri and a soft body cemented to a surface, their bodies are tough, flexible stalks called a peduncle as well as another part of the body at the free end of the stalk called a capitulum. I know that that sounds made up. I know that that sounds made up. Just bear with me. The peduncle mostly just acts as the attachment organ, but does contain the ovaries and some muscles. And the capitulum holds the rest as well as the protective plates. But no matter the species, the body plan, or the lifestyle, this barnacle will remain cemented to its surface for the rest of its life. And as long as they are not removed from the surface, they will live here for 5 to 10 years, some larger species living up to 20 years old, and the cycle will continue. Barnacles have caused some harm to things like ships and other organisms they choose to live on. However, they have also helped us engineer new and stronger types of glues and cements, and there is still so much we can learn from these creatures as long as we stay curious and keep exploring. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I really hope you enjoyed it. I'm really glad to be back. Hopefully I can keep this bi-weekly thing up. Let me know if you have any other suggestions for what you want to learn about now. Don't forget to give this video a like for the algorithm. All of my links will be down in the description below, including my Instagram account, my art Instagram account, my Facebook group, the video I mentioned earlier that has the parasitic barnacle, and most importantly, all of the resources I used in today's video. So don't forget to go check those out and I will see you guys in a couple of weeks. Bye.